Hi, and welcome. If you wanted to grow a successful real estate business but didn't know how, we'd like to introduce you to the best practices of doing it through what's known as real estate farming. Successfully farming an area can generate a strong six-figure income. In fact, we've had a number of clients earn over $100,000 in their first 12 months with our services, so this stuff really works. This is the second of six videos to walk you through step-by-step -step exactly how to build a successful farm. In this video, you'll learn a simple way to filter homeowners so you only market to those most likely to sell and increase your return on investment. Be sure to check out our website at thelistinggrabber.org to learn how to automate this and even have us do it for you. So as you start farming, one of the big questions is to ask, do I mail to everyone in the farm or just to certain homeowners? Well, in a free world, and that means free printing, free postage, free everything, then the easy answer is to mail it to everyone. However, mailing costs money, so that answer doesn't really work. You always want to stay focused on your objective. The objective in farming is twofold. Number one, to get as many listings as possible on an ongoing basis. And number two, to do it as inexpensively as possible. Unfortunately, sometimes those two objectives conflict with each other. And let me share why. Suppose for a moment you're farming an area and one of the homeowners is Jill. Jill just purchased her home. So here's a question for you. Statistically speaking, is Jill likely to sell her home in the next year? The answer, of course not. She just bought it, and most likely, most homeowners don't sell until they've been in their home around seven years or longer. So from that perspective, it would make sense to filter Jill out of your mailings so it doesn't cost you any more money than it ought to, correct? Well, that solves the second objective, getting listings at the lowest cost possible by cutting out those not likely to sell. However, there are two problems with it. First, in several years, Jill may be ready to sell, but if you haven't been mailing her, she doesn't know who you are, so when she does go on the market, she doesn't call you. And second, something may happen in Jill's life in the next year that causes her to have to sell. If you're not mailing her, she won't be calling you either. So do these problems make sense? The big question then is, how do you filter the homeowners to focus on those most likely to sell, but do it in such a way that you don't lose out on the future listings from the others? Well, at Listing Grabber, we've gone back and forth on this issue. We want to be wise stewards of our clients' funds, but at the same time, we don't want to be foolish and lose listings for our clients either. So after looking at this from multiple perspectives, we came up with a simple plan to accomplish both objectives, to consistently get the most listings and do it at the least possible expense. We call this simple process magic grouping. Here's how it works. Realizing that both new homeowners and what we call long-term lifer homeowners, those who are living there for a long time and plan to live there the rest of their lives, those two groups of, those groups of people are less likely to sell than those who have been living there seven years or more. So we decided to group these homeowners into two separate mailing lists. The first group are those who are most likely to sell in the next several years based on how long they've been in their home. Okay, In other words, if they aren't new homeowners and they aren't lifer homeowners, then they go in this first group. And we mail this group every month because that's where the majority of listings come from. And then the second group are those that are left over, the newer homeowners and the lifer homeowners. And we mail this group less frequently, usually about once every other month. In other words, they still get mailed, but only about half the time. That way, our clients are still in front of them, but aren't spending a lot of money targeting them. And then presto, you accomplish the objective maximizing your listings, and minimizing your investment. Now, top producing real estate agents usually get there and stay there through some form of, mar of farming and marketing. Farming is the most successful way to build a large six-figure annual income for your real estate business. And equally as important, the income is consistent. Once you build your dominance in a farm, you own it, meaning you are the agent homeowners think of for the real estate needs. And once you own it, it constantly produces listings for you. This is why we are such a big proponent of real estate farming. How effective is all this really? Well, here's a comment from one of our clients. We have had great success with this program. Seven closed transactions that close to $70,000 in paid commissions with two new listings so far this year. We've had great success with this program, and I hope you do too. And uh, learn how you can uh, help uh, start and dominate a farm yourself and actually guarantee your results, simply visit our website at thelistinggrabber.org. Have a great day.